And welcome to Chartwise Women, brought to you each and every Thursday afternoon. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal, and I'm here with Erin Swenlin, where we share with you our wealth of wisdom to help you outperform the broader markets. So, Erin, how are you? How's it going? Oh, everything is going pretty well over here. How about for you? A little bit of a turn in the market. Yes, we are getting a bit of a turn, a little bit, uh, certainly some of those higher moving areas in the past few weeks, we've been talking about alternative energy and uh, some areas of technology as well that are pulling back. But today, I think we're going to be really helping our viewers because we are going to be sharing and talking about recovery stocks. And it's going to be a little bit more than your sick cyclical recovery areas that generally do well when the economy is doing well. Uh, this has more to do with the concept that vaccine rollouts are picking up. We are getting good news in the way of COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations are uh, dropping. The World Health Organization did come out and say that they're continuing to drop due primarily to steep declines in the U.S. and the U.K. Those were two areas that were really uh, had spiked quite a bit. So that is very good news. So with an eye toward a potential expansion of more vaccinated people, we're going to see more in the way of mobility, people getting out and about more. So that is an area, certainly something we can daydream about, right, Erin? Absolutely. I know I have been for months. <laughs> yes. I, I had mentioned before the show that my dear friend in New York City uh, compromised individuals, but she was able to get vaccinated. And we kind of had that, what would you do first? Uh, kind of a daydream, if you will, when mm -hmm. things do open up quite a bit more. So we, I, Aaron and I are both going to share our first uh, adventures out into the world once things clear and uh, lots more that we're going to be sharing with you today. So let's begin as usual. We're going to share with you our wisdom of the week and I'll go ahead. Mine is up there, the top bullet point, And that is the fact that the broader markets in general, they are very forward looking and in general or on average, it is about six months in timing. So we are with an eye toward, again, that vaccine rollout, uh, keeping our eye on these recovery areas, these areas that are going to benefit the most from people uh, moving about a bit more. Absolutely. I would have to say that uh, for me, um, you know, you can get a jump on the markets just simply by recognizing these shifts in consumer spending and priorities. You know, it, it all comes down to money and, you know, consumers are the ones that keep everything running. You know, I was looking at my email this morning and it was email after email telling me how to spend my money. <laughs> so, you well, know, it's all know. about the money. So seeing where consumers are concentrating, for example, you know, we saw with the, uh, you know, when we had lockdowns, the expansion and the of the work at home and then new ETFs that are based off of working at home. So it's, you know, just important to see what's going on in the markets with those consumer spending and priorities. You bet. And in fact, when you look at the GDP, over three quarters of the gross domestic product in the U.S. is comprised of or uh, composed of uh, consumer spending. That is the driver here in the U.S. and uh, critical component to an economy that is recovering. So, uh, Aaron, I, I think I'll go first and kind of share my uh, my dream daydream trip, if you will. Once uh, yes, our back, first trips. <laughs> yes, our post pandemic. Uh, just uh, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, we can journey with me along with my uh, fantasy trip here. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. First up here is a daily price chart of JetBlue. JBLU is the ticker symbol. symbol. We're looking at a daily price chart and take a look. The stock they did come out with their numbers a little over a week ago. Their revenues came in. Uh, actually, they did report 
about three weeks ago. Their revenues did come in ahead of estimates. We can see that the stock since then has broken out of a nice six week base. And then we have a nice continuation rally following this base breakout. The RSI is positive as is the MACD. JetBlue did come out with news that they are slashing their basic economy fares. So uh, they are gonna have quite a bit in the way of restrictions, but that was viewed as positive news. But what I wanted to point out, and we're gonna be seeing a lot of that in these recovery stocks, on November 9th, when that vaccine, Pfizer's vaccine, uh, with, with their high efficacy was announced November 9th. Take a look at that gap up on that bullish news. So these airlines, there's going to be a lot of other areas so we're going to be sharing with you that will benefit once uh, things get going again. So we can see nice positive dynamics taking place. So where will I go on JetBlue? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants to know. I have it in my head. I would like to go, of course, uh, with my husband and journey back east to New York City. I know it's been a little bit quiet there, but it just holds a place in my heart. I lived there for a number of years, and uh, I just have a sense that it will most certainly come back. Uh, I did mark up a chart here, but I don't see it. But we can, of course, take a look here. Hilton, uh, they do own uh, the Oh my goodness, the <laughs> Waldorf Astoria, which is located in Midtown Manhattan near a lot of lovely uh, landmarks. So again, this is that November 9th gap up on the vaccine news. And since then, Hilton has kind of waffled a bit, but generally in a nice uptrend. So let's take a look at what's happening today. The stock is up 3%. They came out with their earnings number last night after the close, and they had a very surprising fourth quarter loss. Revenues were down 60 Two percent. Now, I did search far and wide as to why the stock was up three percent. Despite that, uh, they did management did come out and provide insight as far as their occupancy rates from April to October. They were in a very very steady up. Now, this is this April to October. They did see each and every month an increase, uh, but then once lockdown did occur, it it stalled again. But management was very hopeful going forward. So hence, we are seeing this break back above these shorter term, simple moving averages, your RSI and your MACD in positive territory. And of course, one in New York, uh, always nice to have a very lovely dinner. So I'm pulling up a restaurant stock here, R-U-T-H. This is Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, a very, very high end, uh, definitely, I would call it a celebration type of a restaurant. Or of course, if you're on an expense account, <laughs> you can you can get journey there. But let's take a look. This is another one. The stock is up almost 5% percent today. And what I did want to point out to you is that it is breaking out of a nice base on this uh, nice move today. We're getting nice volume characteristics, RSI, MACD are constructive. Uh, analysts are actually bullish on the prospects for this stock simply because of that higher price tab that it will not take crowds of people for them to regain their revenue. Uh, they do have earnings due February 19th, so that is going to be uh, coming up here. And then also, I did want to point out to you that they reported their earnings right back in here. And they had this, uh, on October 29th revenues well above estimates. And then of course, here's that nice recovery gap up. So definitely put this one on your radar screen. One last one, Aaron, and then I have to let you <laughs> share, share your uh, trip. We sure. want to know what your thoughts are. But this is Visa. It, this is very much a recovery stock as well. It has waffled here. They came out with pretty good numbers here. But you can see it's just bouncing around here among its shorter term, simple moving averages. Visa and MasterCard are two companies that fare well when individuals are traveling. Their profit margins increase as certainly Americans use their credit cards overseas. So I'm going to need to see a breakout above this high back here at about the 218 level. And on any kind of volume, this MACD just poised to turn positive and the RSI already is positive. So look for a recovery in uh, Visa.
And uh, yeah, that's my, my. All right. Well, for me, um, and you know, very well, I love to cruise. So, and I have been, oh my gosh, my email has been full of deals from all of those cruise lines that I like to go on. (laughs) And, uh, I haven't uh, gone ahead and pulled the trigger on it, even though they're, they kind of are like, oh, well, you know, you can travel within the year. I'm still not totally comfortable yet. But anyway, before I get on a cruise ship, I have to book, to book it. So I took a look at Expedia, which is also doing very well. You can see right here the breakout that occurred and then the pullback. And now we're taking off again. And you can see a really nice PMO buy signal going on here. Volume coming in as the OBV is confirming that rise in the bottoms here on price. And of course, a nice uh, high scooter. So I like uh, Expedia. And so let's go ahead and take a look at some of those cruise lines. Um, I do like to travel on Carnival. I know that surprises some people, but um, I, when I go on a cruise, I, I am one of those people who I want to party. So I have to say with the Carnival ships, uh, it's never a dull moment. But uh, if you want a quiet vacation, certainly not the uh, cruise line for you. Mm. But I really like the breakout here. You can see a nice uh, reverse head and shoulders with that breakout. It's coming back down to that breakout point, which is exactly what we want to see it doing. And then the next step, of course, would be a bounce off of this area. And given that the momentum is looking so good and the RSI is still positive, uh, I think that the cruise lines might be a, a place to start investing. And I've been watching very closely for my diamond readers. And I just haven't, just like with buying my cruise ticket, I haven't really had the, um, I haven't pulled the trigger on yet. Yeah, but it's starting to shape up in a way that I think, uh, you know, we can really take advantage of this recovery period and see if we can't, you know, even if we just get up to that top over there, you know, that's a, that's still a 10% gain. So mm-hmm. I think it's looking pretty good here for Carnival. Really quickly, I'll look at um, Nordstrom. Because I need to prepare. If you go on a cruise, everybody knows you have all those evening nights, you know, where you have to dress up and have your evening gowns. They're a little better about not making you do it, but I always have to. That's part of the fun of going on those cruises to be able to dress up for a change. So I wanted to look at Nordstrom and Stitch Fix, of course, which is my favorite, but you can see there's that support level and we're getting the bounce off of it right now. We don't have momentum shifting upward just yet, so it might be more of a watch list um, candidate, but if we do get the gain all the way back to where it was back in January, that's a 17.5% gain. So, you know, a lot of these have been so beat down that it does offer a really nice um, upside potential on some of these. And let me look at Stitch Fix and then we'll move probably to our break, huh? You bet. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So this one has been a favorite of mine, as everybody knows. It has been pulling back. You can see momentum is shifting lower, and you also have the RSI moving negative. But we are at a very important decision point, if you will. This is the point right here where you've got that very strong support level, and it needs to bounce here. If we lose the 50 and we lose the support level, not, uh, not a good look for Stitch Fix. But if we can see it start to make that turn off of this support level, uh, might be a good time to try it and get in. Even if we can get up, look at this, back to that February top, just that would give you a 17 or 8 percent gain just to get up back here to this resistance level. So looking very interesting for Stitch Fix. Very good. Wow. Okay. I think uh, we can, we're going to daydream for a minute here during the break and we have lots more when we get back. are back 
take a look at that restful uh, puppy there. We're going to be talking more about mobility and being able to get out and about as the economy is recovering in light of vaccine rollouts that are starting to pick up. And we're also seeing a decrease in COVID cases. So uh, with that, we're uh, Aaron and I are going to share our dream staycation. Of course, we both are from the Los Angeles area, so I think you'll see a theme there. But let me go ahead and share my screen and the first uh, item or stock that I am going to be sharing with you is related. Aaron talked about that concept of having the perfect outfit. Uh, we're so used to wearing our Lululemons and uh, sweat <laughs> sweatpants. So the concept to be able to get dressed up is really... Uh, really quite um, interesting and, and a concept that's gonna, I'm gonna wrap my head right around. So uh, <laughs> let's take a look. This is Revolve Group RVLV. They are a company based out of Los Angeles and they do have uh, moderately to high price, just very current uh, apparel primarily for women. And I did want to share, this is a daily price chart. The company's really been doing quite well, as you can see. They came out with third quarter numbers in mid-October, and the uh, earnings were 100% above estimates. And a lot of that had to do with, they came through with very, uh, with masks that were in high demand. But then since then, they have uh, pivoted to leisure wear and they do have quite the following. So take a look, we can see the stock is in a very confirmed uptrend. The company is due to report their earnings next week. So we're gonna be on the prowl for that at this juncture. It does appear to be doing a little bit more than just consolidating. We can see this downward trending MACD indicating that the momentum is shifting. So of course we will know a lot more next week after earnings. So that is one, but then uh, nicely dressed, where where will I head? Well, I will begin by driving my car. Uh, this is a daily chart of General Motors. Uh, I don't own a General Motors vehicle, but I really like the stock. It's just doing everything right as far as entering into the electric vehicle arena. And we can see the stock is holding up really nicely. It is pulling back a little bit here. They did come out with their numbers last week. We can see that the momentum is shifting a bit downward. I would argue that it is consolidating after this really extensive upward move here, all on good news as far as their expansion. So keep an eye on this stock. We will wanna see a move similar to this December into January period when we get this nice upward move in the momentum indicators coming from these lower areas. But where will I drive? Well, okay. we're not too far. I, I live about an hour away from Disney, uh, their park, which is in Anaheim, California. And uh, we can see that the stock uh, has had a nice upward move. They too did just come out with earnings and uh, they were 188% above estimates. And a lot of that is because their parks have been closed. So there was anticipation that they would not have great numbers. They did actually come out with good numbers, but their streaming media division is really carrying the torch. So uh, keep your eye on Disney. Aaron, I'm gonna <laughs> find out where you're gonna go for your staycation. Well, you know, um, and my readers probably know, it's gonna be all about Vegas, baby. I <laughs> There's probably a reason that I'm in uh, the stock market. I do love, uh, a gamble, not that mm. uh, what we do here is like blackjack, in my opinion, we know the rules, we're still kind of stuck with what happens with the card deal, but at least we know the rules. So we set ourselves up to do well. And so I'm going to look at a few of these gambling stocks. And you're probably uh, about first... four hours away, right? Four yes, hours? that's the thing. I know it sounds like it wouldn't be a staycation, but honestly, for us, it is. It's a weekend trip. It's easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I've just been dying to get back there, uh, definitely. This is a gaming ETF, BJK. I've talked about this one. It was a diamond for my readers back here, right before we got that big move to the upside. It's kind of, you know, consolidating a little bit here. We got a little bit of a pullback, but the RSI is still positive and you could still see that move to the upside. And I like that. Penn is actually the highest scooter rated um, gambling stock right now out there. And you can see it has also made a big 
bit of a pullback, but it pulled right back to the short-term support level and the 20-day EMA, and it looks like it is ready to start making the turn. We do need to watch the momentum, though, for for the PMO, because you know, right now we're on a sell signal. We'll want to see that shift a little bit more uh, to make sure we're going to get that uh, stick above the 20-day EMA. And of course, one of the things I found I missed just totally uh, during this lockdown was live music. I mean, I cannot mm. even believe how into live music I was. I just didn't. I mean, it was sort of one of those things we did, but it's, oh, I cannot wait to start seeing some concerts. And you can see a lot of people, <laughs> we are looking six months ahead and there's gonna be some ticket purchases that you're gonna wanna do probably on your Live Nation account. Looks like we might be pulling back a little bit back towards support right now, and it is very overbought. So that might be something just to see if we can't get a little bit more of a pullback there to give us a much better entry. And then finally, my last one, is I'm very bad at it, <laughs> but if I'm in Vegas and the weather is right, I know my husband and I would love to go and uh, golf. It's one of our um, things. Well, he does it. I just mo mostly watch and, and uh, hit a ball or two and see what happens. Uh, I, we don't want to lose too many <laughs> happens when I play, but you can see again, a nice pullback to that 20 day EMA and a positive RSI. We're not to the entry point because we do probably wanna see a little more pullback. We're gonna probably see it given the shift in momentum to the downside, makes sense. So just another one that maybe you wanna keep on your watch list. It looks like it, it might pull back to the 50 like it did the last two times. And then we'll wanna give it a, a good watch because this is certainly something else I would imagine that we're gonna see on staycations and that consumers are gonna to wanna to start purchasing their golf clubs in uh, in uh, getting ready for that. So and yeah, there actually has been a lot of, have been a lot of people continuing to play golf uh, despite lockdown. It's viewed as an, an outdoor sport that's really continuing to do well. I'm sorry, go right ahead. Oh yeah, no problem. This is another I had been looking at. I'm I'm bowling fanatic, believe it or not. That was an, that's another thing that we didn't realize we would miss so much. But we were going very often here to our local alley with friends, and it was just such a great time and a very cheap um, entertainment. Um, right now, it looks like a double top that we've got going on, and it's going to come back down to this level, which would be the confirmation line, but what is also very strong support. So we want to see if it can hold that 50-day EMA. And again, some of these aren't you know, ready for prime time, if you will, but these are the ones that you might want to keep an eye on as we do go through and, and hopefully get, get out of our lockdowns and and start getting out there once uh, those vaccines uh, continue to roll out to everyone. Very good. Great. Okay. Well, we are going to move on from our little uh, fantasy life here and <laughs> back to reality. We are going to Darn. do our last segment. It's called Yeah, That Happened, where we scour the headlines for news that is, is of interest, certainly found this one interesting because it will tie into that recovery again. But uh, there was a headline out of Alaska that one Alaska king salmon is now worth the same as two barrels of oil right now. And that might not mean much, but oil prices have been surging of late. And there's been a big demand in uh, for seafood. I guess people are getting healthy as they're anticipating uh, having to put real clothes back on. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look. I am going to share with you a couple of stocks that uh, we can tie into that concept of salmon. Prices going up quite a bit. And this first chart here is a view of Brent, uh, Brent crude oil prices, and they are up at $64. And for some people, that might not mean much. This is an area that I've covered very, very closely, certainly going back to this November period. At that time, there was great anticipation that we might reach 50. That's that break even dollar per barrel price that from there, uh, oil companies can then think about making profits and returning to profitability. But now we have spiked all the way up to 60. 
four dollars so two barrels will get you that uh, 11 pound salmon but uh, from here i'm going to go ahead and share an energy related stock that has been my favorite and then aaron i'll pass it to you but mm -hmm. this is a daily chart of devon and energy they are an energy and uh, exploration and production stock. This is one that made it to my MEM Edge report right here in November when it broke out of this base, actually prior to the base breakout, but it broke above these shorter term simple moving averages and the RSI and the MACD both turned positive simultaneously. This is a triple play right here, something that I'm always on the prowl for. And from there, we can see the stock has been a real winner. They gapped up again here, came out with numbers that were quite constructive earlier this week, and the stock had another base breakout on big volume with positive outside momentum indicators. So this is certainly uh, one of my more favorite stocks in the oil yeah. space. Yeah. Excellent. I do have one in that energy space. And then I also want to give everybody a look at my oil chart because it's something I do all the time. <laughs> and my DP alert is look at USO. So I'll look at that very quickly. And then we will look at my favorite energy stock right now. Well, we'll start with my favorite energy stock because it's right here on the list. And that gives us time in case we run a little low on time. Uh, so this is one that I've been watching and you know we've I put it on our list fairly early. I think it was way back. It was right about here. So we we're back to the entry point that I had um, pointed out to my diamond readers at the time. And I think that this is a, a pretty attractive entry point. You've got the RSI has moved out of that overbought territory. You've got the buy signal. Yes, we have that momentum tipping over slightly, but you know, when you have um, a couple of down days that are as steep as what we've seen right here, it kind of makes sense to see that tip over a little bit. But overall, I mean, you've got that volume you can see here in the thumbnail rising. Uh, bottoms on the OBV and rising bottoms on price. This pullback could be really interesting. So this is one that I've been looking at in the pipeline area. But let me give everybody a look just quickly at my oil chart and then we'll close it down here. All right. So yeah, USO has been, you know, doing particularly well. And you know, today it certainly is, we're seeing a bit of a pullback. It certainly was ready for a pullback. I've been looking at this as a rising um, wedge for quite some time, but the strength of this rally, it just was too hard to look at it and have any kind of a bearish, um, you know, looking at it in a bearish way. So I, I opted to adjust my annotations using these first two tops and then this lines up with these three bottoms. And so at this point, you can see we're pushing up against the top of this rising trend channel, but we really haven't, you know, it's time for a little bit of a pullback. We need to see the RSI moving out of that overbought territory. It's really looking a lot better. You know, oil has just been doing so well. So, uh, I mean, seeing that move from that October low and just this really nice consistent rising trend. It's hard to imagine that this trend is gonna to reverse too soon because of the stance of the administration on fossil fuel usage. So I suspect we're gonna start seeing, you know, a little bit on the shortage side, higher prices at the pump, but that would, you know, translate into a pretty good investment in this area. Yeah, we already are seeing a big spike in pump prices. So uh, I think that Texas freeze has a lot to do with it as well. Yep, absolutely. This is All another right. one that I found interesting, but it's really making the a turn for the worst, <laughs> worse, if you will. But we have come down and we're at that support level in the 20s. So we'll have to see how that works out. Oh my gosh, very good. We are going to have to close it out at that, everyone. We look forward to seeing you next Thursday afternoon. Take care. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.